My name is Dr. Harrison Pitcher. This is Dr. Hiroshi. We are cardiac surgeons and cardiac surgical intensivists here in the ICU at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital. Today we're going to be discussing a case involving weaning from ECMO utilizing miniaturized transesophageal echocardiography. The case involves a 71-year-old male who presented with three days of chest pain. He subsequently was brought to the catheterization lab and was demonstrating a 100% occlusion of the left anterior descending artery. At that time, an interaortic balloon pump was placed and he had opening of that vessel utilizing a bare metal stent. Unfortunately, post-procedure, he developed evidence of cardiogenic shock, demonstrated pulmonary edema and hemodynamic instability. Subsequently, in the cath lab, VA ECMO was inserted utilizing a 20 French arterial catheter and a 24 French venous. HTE was placed in the CVICU at the bedside, uh, which demonstrated the biventricular dysfunction showing this slide. Over the next 10 days, while in ECMO support, the patient was afebrile, was eubulimic, demonstrated normalcy in his chest x-ray, and subsequently was heparinized higher to a PTT between 60 and 70 in order to do a four-staged ECMO weaning. So first image was taken for the full flow of the ECMO, which was uh, running five liter per minute. So HTE demonstrated patient have the some of the uh, recovery of ventricular function. This is the baseline image of the uh, HTE of this patient. We decreased the flow from five to four liter per minute. And then the HTE still demonstrated a well decompressed left and right ventricle, showing here. We came down the ECMO flow from four to three drops per minute, and the HTE has been continually monitoring the patient. The picture showing here demonstrating the decompressed right ventricle, and the left and right ventricle function adequate. The picture shown here is right after the 500 cc of the albumin. The minimum, uh, there is no uh, distension of the left or right ventricle. Since left and right ventricle is well decompressed, uh, we decided to bring, give him a 500 cc albumin to optimize the uh, uh, volume status. And the picture here is showing the right after the 500 cc albumin with the uh, uh, patient had the ECMO flow of the 2.5 liter per minute, which is half of the flow he required at the optimum stage. Since patient hemodynamics stays same, as well as the HTE demonstrated the left and right ventricular uh, recovery, we decided further coming down the ECMO flow to minimum, which is one liter per minute. The picture showing here is the time of the two liter per minute of ECMO flow, and patient has uh, no anatope requirement at this moment. At this moment, we added on the 2.5 mic, mic per kg per minute of the dobutamine to see the uh, response to the anatropes. Actually, we started the five, five mic per kg per minute of dobutamine patient went to the tachycardia. We came down 2.5 mic per kg per minute of dobutamine. The picture here is showing the uh, patient who was on the minimum ECMO flow, two liter per minute, with the dobutamine two and a half mic per kg per minute. This picture demonstrated well recovered left ventricular function. At this moment, we decided to bring the patient to the operating room to decannulate the ECMO tomorrow. At this point, the patient was returned to full flow. Utilizing this four-stage weaning technique, we now have a quantitative method in order to predictively wean patients from ECMO support. As in this case, who this patient who demonstrated biventricular recovery, we were able to return the patient to the operating room the following day and successfully wean him from ECMO support. Also, in other patients, we have noted the fact that if we could not subsequently wean them completely from the device, but they demonstrated right ventricular recovery, then the patients were appropriate candidates for left ventricular assist device support. If, however, they demonstrated left ventricular recovery, but not right, the patient would be an appropriate candidate for right ventricular assist devices. If, unfortunately, the patient demonstrates ongoing biventricular failure, then the patient can have assessment for possible total artificial heart 
or cardiac transplantation. Although this was a limited study, it was 100% predictable in successful weaning from the ECMO circuit. 